For nearly a decade, shark researcher Ralph Collier and his assistant Brandon McMillan have investigated a series of brutal attacks of Central California. Now, after nine years without a fatal attack in these waters, a predator has resurfaced. This time at nearby Morro Bay, on Christmas Eve, 2021. Can Ralph and Brandon identify the killer before it strikes again and help save lives in this quiet seaside town? This is the pit, just north of iconic Morro Rock. There have been several shark attacks here in the past, and plenty of terrifying near misses. This spot is known for great whites, but nothing like this has ever happened before. A sad start to Christmas tonight. A young man was found dead. Today, a man died of an apparent attack here in Morro Bay, north of the Pitt Beach on State Park's property. First responders arrived on scene and declared the man dead on the beach. Beachgoers will not be allowed in the water. Some from the community are shocked that this incident happened close to home. Thomas Butterfield, a body boarder. A brother, a son, tragically killed on Christmas Eve by what appears to have been a massive great white shark. Since the attack, a pall hangs over this town, leaving locals to wonder, why here and why now? Ralph begins his investigation with the harbor master, who was on the scene when the victim was recovered. Has there ever been anything that even closely resembles what you saw it here? It's the first fatal shark attack we've had since I've been here. The last fatal attack in Morro Bay was 1957 and claimed the life of a 25-year-old college student from Brooklyn, New York. Since then, five other victims survived shark bites in these waters. Thomas Butterfield wasn't so lucky. Once we arrived on scene and realized what had occurred, we put a boat out on the water and got the rest of the people out of the water. They were nearby. We closed the beach for 72 hours, and then we kept warning signs up for the following week because it was Christmas vacation time and a lot of people were around. It's something everybody thinks about when they go out in the water now. There were no known witnesses to the Thomas Butterfield attack. No one to identify the shark or see how it happened. But there may be clues yet to be uncovered, which has led Brandon to Morrow Bay. And this couple, Ben and Rebecca Frimmer, who were in the water that day, what they saw still haunts them. So take me back to Christmas Eve. I understand the conditions weren't that good that day, but you just had to go surfing anyway? Yeah, no, they really weren't that good. It was windy and kind of nasty. So even though the conditions were kind of crappy, it was some time together, some time in the water, and we just figured we'd head out for just a little while. In the rough conditions, the couple became separated. Rebecca decided to head in. So you were paddling in and you saw a bodyboard sticking straight up with no rider. At that point, what did you think? I was, um... hang on a second. <laughs> As I was paddling in, I saw a board like floating on top of the water. 
so I figured I would just go pull it out so it didn't just become more trash in the ocean. I started pulling on the board. I could feel it was heavy. It wasn't really until I could like hop off my board and see what was going on that I realized that there was definitely a person there. As I started pulling the board in, that became apparent. You pulled up on the leash. You made the discovery. Did you think right away it was a shark attack? When I first found Tom, you know, he was, he was floating on his stomach. And so I couldn't see, like, the excessive nature of the wounds on his chest until I pulled him in. Seeing all the commotion on the beach, Rebecca's husband, Ben, swam back to shore to help. You know, I've been a paramedic and combat medic, so I figured maybe I can help this guy or something. So we went over to kind of investigate and talk with the Harbor Patrol at that point. And it was, it was pretty clear when I, when I saw Tom that he, he had been long deceased. Maybe it hits harder just because it, you don't usually see humans being eaten, you know? Maybe it just hits home more because I'm a surfer and it's our greatest fear. Maybe everybody's greatest fear, you know? Um, it was a pretty sizable bite. I think Tom's death was instant. I don't even know if he knew what was happening. It looked like he was essentially almost bit in half. I mean, he must have bled out within seconds. I'm in awe of the shark, of their power. They're faster, they're bigger, they have much better senses than us. One bite and that's it? I don't even think you get a warning. I think they go so fast and they're so stealthy. They attack from like under them. It's devastating what they can do. Christmas Eve, Brandon, there were several internet cameras filming surfing conditions at Morro Bay. Oh, really? I've gone through hundreds of hours of video, and I have not been able to find Thomas anywhere. So are we at a dead end? No, we've actually got some good forensic evidence. This is the bodyboard Thomas was riding when he was attacked. No bites at first glance. But take a look at this. Yeah, those are definitely teeth. These are posterior teeth from the back of the lower jaw of a white shark. There's a tooth fragment embedded in the board. Wow, look at that. Look at this. Wow. White sharks often leave tooth fragments behind in cases like this. So I guess we know what species this is. Yes. This was a massive great white shark. OK, so how big? One way to find out is to get a hold of Thomas Butterfield's wetsuit. There must be multiple bites in the wetsuit, and I could use that to determine the size of the shark down to a foot or two. So if we know the size of the shark. If we know the size of the shark that killed Thomas, and if it matches the size of a previously tagged shark by researchers off the California coast, we might be able to identify the exact shark that killed Thomas Butterfield.